So, hey, I've been a little lax on creating these. I don't see how Master Cheesy creates them, like, every three days. He must really enjoy making mob lists. I prefer telling stories, but if this brings the people to the yard, I do often roam Nexus and find cool new things, as well as author Discord. Anyway, I'm going to give you a quick bunch of things you might have missed. There are a lot more from each month, but I like to hit quirky and obscure highlights first. June. You know my video Obese Skyrim that had used multiple load orders to play Fat Skyrim, Ban Malore, and Jute Bandy series? Well, the author of Ban Malore made patches for all three, so no longer needed. Also, there's an update for Ban Malore and it makes it even bigger. Also, also, he's got another mod, Pry Eye. Check it out. You know Rune from the Cistern from the Thieves Guild in Riften? Revealing Rune is a small quest mod that fleshes out his backstory just a little bit. After you finish the Thieves Guild quest line, talk to him and you'll get a quest to search the coast of Solitude. I don't want to spoil it, but his parents were shipwrecked. I'll have to play this as a part of a video sometime, assuming I can deconflict what the mod adds to canon with that of Brynjolf and the Riften Guild. Also a good mod that never got the recognition it deserved. ESL flag so it doesn't take up a slot. Vampire Animations adds new neckbite animations for kill moves, if you're a vampire of course. This sent me on a path of cataloging mods that add kill moves, which I'll probably make a video on later. And slash or my favorite kill moves from vanilla. Here's a hint, most of them are the unarmed ones. No slot because it's an or based mod. You know how illusion spells are nearly worthless until you get high level, since they all have a level cap? Even with Ordinator and various other mods that give them scaling, I feel like there should be a middle ground. Like when you cast a fireball and it hurts an enemy a little, so you just cast it again. Cumulative Fear Frenzy Calm allows you to cast these spells on an enemy multiple times, having an additive effect. Once you overcome an enemy's resistance with your cumulative cast, the spell will take effect, which is a fantastic idea. Give your enemy something to be scared of. ESL, so no slot. Skynames gives all vanilla NPCs last names. This ranges from family names to titles to where they're from. It's especially useful for races that don't tend to have last names e.g. red guards and orcs. Just a little slice of immersion. Goes well with NPC name distributor, which adds names to generic NPCs. It also has a patch to make sure they don't double up. And that mod goes well with another mod later on. This is an SKSE plugin, so once again, no slot. I would be doing you a disservice here if I did mention that Legacy of the Dragonborn did a large version update in June. And has had a couple small updates since then. However, since I'm on 1.5 Skyrim still and don't plan to upgrade and dump my 1700 mod load order anytime soon, I haven't really been able to try it. It's also why I volunteered to playtest and didn't actually contribute anything. People love Legacy of the Dragonborn and with a big update, if you're on AE, you should go check it out. If it wasn't obvious, they don't support 1.5 anymore. Take that as you will. I'm not mad about it, I'm happy where I am. July. First I want to point out a mod author. Unorthodog, with two Gs, released a large DLC-sized adventure in August, but leading up until then, he was releasing these mods that recut specific locations every couple of days, adding back and expounding upon cut content. If you have cutting room floor, I do, and just happen to be about to start a new playthrough, I will probably in a couple months, well, it'll be an actual continuation of my current playthrough, but with a new load order. You should check them out. Here's a not all-inclusive list of some of the stuff they had. Maidenloom Manor, Ulfbirth's House, Frostfruit Inn, it adds a bunch of stuff to it. Dorvaskar Ceremony Room with Vignar having a back way in. Mihail having a new song. Vignar and Balgriff having a conversation. And that's just Whiterun, there's like 15 of these. There's an all-in-one if you want to just make it easy. It's not ESLified and neither are the smaller individual ones. However, I was able to compact the White Run 1 without any trouble, and I assume it's probably the biggest. So if you know how to do that and you want to spend the time, you could probably get all the like 10 to 15 of these and ESLify them and have no slots. From one of the less known but still great quest add-on magnates on the Nexus comes Taste of Death quest add-on. During the vanilla quest, you only have three options. Join the cannibal cult and kill the priest that lets you in, kill the leader of the cult, or betray the cult and save the priest. This mod adds more parts to the quest as well as clues to who the cannibals are in the cavern. 
It adds the option to just not side with the cult and refuse the ring. It also adds a boss fight with the Mira's previous champion. And has a curse if you do have the ring that the only way you can get not hungry is by eating flesh. Fun for the whole family. Just like the Mira intended. Edmund's Birds is a nice little immersive add-on. It adds ravens, pheasants, seagulls, and flocks of other birds and bats flying around Skyrim. It includes unique audio for bonehawks and places more of those around vampire layers. And adds more undead birds to the soul cairn. You know, one of my entire storylines is about why the heck all the Daedric artifacts and things like gold, brand, Oriole's bow and shield and whatnot are all currently concentrated in Skyrim around 4E201. I mean, to historians, this must be crazy. To genre savvy people, the current nameless hero during the big world changing things are always where the artifacts concentrate. You know, going backwards, it was in Cyrodiil at the beginning of the fourth era, in Morrowind around when the Nerevarine was there, in Daggerfall around the warp in the west, and I guess Arena doesn't count because the Eternal Champion went everywhere. Anyway, all that aside, Lost Relics of Tamriel Echoes of the Past adds even more relics that weren't brought forward in the base game, or brought here with Creation Club without rhyme or reason. Looking at you, Stendar's hammer. It includes Sham Seal from Morrowind, Cyrus' Soul Sword from Redguard, which is an obscure game I never want to play, Moon Reaver from Battlespire, The Brush of True Paint, Debella's Adric Artifact, Stormkiss, which actually belongs in Skyrim, The Sanguine Shortbow, and a few more, all waiting to be found. You know, since you've probably already added a million dungeons to Skyrim, like a piece of Swiss cheese. Also, the author has a few more mods that add even more. And it's an ESL, no slot, August. First of all, the obvious, the Bard College expansion released in August. I did an entire video on it, and I'll be doing a Let's Play at some point. But, you know, most people go to the same few mainstays for Let's Plays and not people like me. Just a summary, it's essentially what a paid mod should look like. With several new game systems, a large main quest line and side quest lines, all fully voiced. It's the closest thing to a DLC that's come out of the Creations program, rivaling things like Dragonborn and Dawnguard. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Obviously, all large quest mods take a slot. But the cool thing about them is that they're pretty modular. You can play one in a playthrough, and then the next time you do a playthrough, just don't have it activated. Perk Adjuster is more like a framework. It allows other modders to add perks to existing trees using configuration files without the headache of version incompatibilities and patches between perk tree. Of course, nobody's made anything for it yet, but it seems like some really cool stuff could be coming. Like add on a couple of the stray perks you like from Vokery into Ordinator, or Vokernator Black, but without taking up 10 slots. It could be like custom skills framework level of advancement for Skyrim modding. Keep an eye on this one. Obviously no slot because it's an SKNC framework. ESL Fire for MO2. This simply allows you to flag mods as ESL and MO2, something that's been available in Vortex for years and always in Exit. I'm really running out of reasons to stay with Vortex. <laughs> Code Jack's Inquisitive Dragons adds dragons that perch and they want to see what humans are doing. They don't attack. Maybe they've been dead so long that they want to see what humanity has been up to for thousands of years. Or maybe they're Aldrin's eyes and ears, who knows. By the same guy, Ambient Flying Dragons adds dragons that fly around in the distance. Kojak's dragon mods are ESL flagged. Cults of Skyrim adds two new cults and new locations to explore across Skyrim and a hunter's faction. It's meant to challenge fans of old school RPGs who can think out their feet and that like tough opponents. Owl Bears is a Mahale mod that adds owlbear assets and the ability to summon them, but no actual owlbears in game for some reason. So I had this idea and I reached out to Power of Three to see if it was possible. My idea was something like base object swapper, spitter, or slash dar, but for enemy spawn points. So you can have a chance of more than one type of enemy spawning on certain spawn points. I was thinking the owl bear would be a great candidate as a chance to spawn from bear spawn points. I think this would make every playthrough very different. Of course, he hasn't responded yet. No! No! ESL, no slot. 10 minute greater powers does exactly what you think. Instead of having to wait an in-game day, you wait 10 minutes to use your powers again. Because in the base game, I usually use them once and then forget they exist forever. 
ESL, no slot. Crowded streets spawns NPCs while you're in a city. Lots of generic NPCs to make Skyrim feel more lived in. And yes, there are mods that do something similar. However, it's very lightweight, ESL flagged, is customizable, and cleans up after itself. According to the author, it occurs in cities and towns whether or not you're inside load doors. And also from conversations with the author, I got an idea. You know how all of these kind of mods add NPCs to just Skyrim? In my load order alone, I have about 20 mods that add new world spaces that have cities. And that's not mentioning all the new towns I've added to Skyrim. And yeah, they usually feel pretty empty. So you can remove the on location changed event condition check flag and X edit. And it could be an add on that populates even cities in Beyond Reach, Beyond Skyrim Burma, Worm's Tooth. You get the picture. Also, people have been asking me to make a new NPCs of Skyrim video. And this is definitely going in as well as Crowded Civil War, which is based on this mod and adds new enemies to the Civil War. When I do make that video, I'll demonstrate how to modify this mod to make it add generic NPCs in modded spaces. ESL, no slot. Ancient Nord Heroes use Doom, by the same author as Dragons use Doom, which got an update by the way, allows the Nords and Sovngarde to use Doom, which makes a lot of sense. That's what they were known for. It's how they defeated Alduin or Center in the future anyway and they've had thousands of years to practice it. They could probably show you a thing or two. And last but not least, here's a big one. Dismembering Framework. It came out in August. It's a mod I've been watching for a little while. It performs dismemberments in real time based on where you're hitting an enemy, assuming you're using precision, which you should be. So as long as you're not performing a kill move and the enemy's health is low enough, you'll slice off a limb. It also has realistic blood splatters. It isn't compatible with maximum carnage, but uh, that mod sends you random letters every few in-game days shilling for money, which annoys the crap out of me. Good riddance. All right, now for some more old gems. Thanks, Shiba. Here's Bash Deflection. I think other mods might do similar things, but for my setup, the ability to bat back spells is very helpful, especially if I'm getting swarmed in melee and burnt up with spells. There's also another mod that lets you deflect with wards, but that sounds a lot more dangerous to me than to enemy. Since I pretty much never use wards and enemies use them constantly. I found this YouTuber named JJFXVR who has an insane modded Skyrim VR setup. He's got a weight vest, haptic technology, and in game he has Mantella based AI NPCs. Shall we continue our exploration now? Or do you require more comedic relief? <laughs> Oh, you have an uppity sense of humor. It's hilarious. It's like you're insulting me with the dictionary. I've tried to get him to spill his secrets on how he's doing it, but he hasn't yet. Maybe someday. Go check him out. He's still pretty small, but he's only done like a few videos. So anyway, that's it for the list. For Let's Plays, coming down the pike is a regular Bard's College episode, then Saints and Seducers, Chapter 2 of Morag Tong, then the time skip will most likely begin. Bard's College expansion happening during the Stolen Year. Val Part 5 will be in the interim. Katana Part 2 will be later once the two of them get their big updates. In other videos, it'll be a mass character intro, a showcase of huge mods coming out in 2025, and an updated NPC mod list. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Happy modding.